It's been a very, very long time, Commander. I have many stories to tell, but that's for another time. Now comes the beginning of a learning exercise. One that is designed to not teach you how to live, but maybe help you stay alive in this place. The only home that I've ever known and the only home that you'll ever know. This isn't for the faint-hearted, Commander, but then again, you are a Commander. If you were faint at heart, you wouldn't be here. Welcome to the Elite Dangerous University. Welcome to Module 2, Zero One, for Advanced Flight. Being able to reliably and efficiently move throughout star systems is very simple to learn, but complicated to master. This module firmly addresses the latter side of that statement, and you will learn how to use your technology in marriage to the nature around you to cut travel times, improve maneuvering, and spend less time flying and more time living. Welcome to Advanced Flight, courtesy of the Elite Dangerous University. This module will cover axial balance, also known as blue flight, gravitic maneuvering, and planetary landing. Mastering these aspects will improve your flight quality, impress your passengers, and allow for greater tactical positioning when engaging in supercruise interdictions. Axial balance is a method of supercruise flight that allows greatly improved attitude adjustment mid-flight by balancing the frame shift velocity along the Z and Y axes mid-flight. By balancing forces along these axes, your ship will be able to tilt at a rate that is approximately five times faster than full cruise flight, where Z axis thrust is at a maximum. Flying with axial balance is referred to as blue flight as the necessary calculations to determine the balance thrust are already made by your onboard flight computer and are displayed as a blue segment of your thrust availability meter. As the computer makes the calculations for you, all you need to do is limit forward thrust to within the blue range in order to achieve axial balance. Try it yourself the next time you are docking at a station or attempting a combat interdiction. Blue flight in supercruise also hides a hidden function that is built in as standard to all Pilots Federation licensed spacecraft. Frameshift technology is disrupted by gravity wells, greatly limiting maximum speed. Fortunately, hyperjump functions are not affected, however in-system jumping is currently impossible to achieve due to the difficulty in calculating reliable navigational models over such short distances. In addition to limiting speed, gravity wells also disrupt the pilot's ability to implement reverse thrust in order to reduce velocity, meaning that destinations can be overshot due to a difficulty in slowing down in sufficient time. Your ship's sensors immediately produce a gravity map of any system you jump into. This data is fed into the navigational computer and directly influences the blue flight meter. To ensure that gravity is incorporated into the equations that determine axial balance velocity. A secondary function of these computations is called Maximal Adjusted Planning, also known as MAP. MAP can generate a flight plan to any in-system destination and automatically optimize your forward thrust to ensure that the gravity distortion of the planet or station you are approaching is sufficient to slow you down enough to safely drop into normal space and dock safely. 
To use MAP, simply input your destination into the navigational computer and ensure that your thrust stays in the blue flight zone. Your flight computer will automatically increase and reduce speed to compensate for gravity wells, making it simple to reach any destination at the optimal speed. Finally, MAP actually creates simulated gravity wells for remote installations or signal sources in order to help docking, limiting your thrust as if you are in proximity to a planet or star, where in fact there are none. Examples of this can be found in remote signal sources, non-orbit stations, and navigational beacons. It is important to understand that without the disruptive effects of a gravity well, your frameshift drive will be much more responsive. By understanding MAP and your frameshift drive, you can essentially deploy an FTL handbrake to stop you from overshooting remote destinations without having to rely on blue flight. Approach your remote destination at whatever speed you like, and just before overshooting, remove the destination from your flight computer. MAP will disengage and you will stop rapidly. This can save you a great deal of time. However, please ensure that your inertial dampeners are functioning properly in order to prevent a wrenching deceleration. Finally, we are going to talk about your Planetary Approach Suite, also known as your PAS, which is essentially a secondary flight computer which regulates frame shift travel in extreme proximity to celestial bodies that your vessel can land onto. Due to the severe gravimetric distortions involved, the PAS will only function at speeds less than 200 km per second and will activate at certain distances to the surface determined by the size and gravity well of the planet. These conditions will be displayed by your primary flight computer as soon as you have inputted a PAS-compatible destination. The objective of any planetary approach is to assume a stable orbit first and then navigate to your landing site. Orbit first, landing second. When the PAS activates, it will display five pieces of critical information. Your approach attitude, displayed in degrees, the localized gravity force, distance to frame shift drop, your planetary coordinates, and the entry projection model. The entry projection model, or EPR, takes your attitude and velocity and gives a rough estimation of the flight model, determining your overall altitude trend. Basically, if the EPR is high on the scale, you are reliably flying away from the planet. If it is low, you are approaching. If the EPR returns a low red result, it believes you are in danger of a collision if remedial action isn't taken. A red EPR should be interpreted as a flight emergency. When the PAS is active, you should aim to enter a stable orbit immediately. You can find the orbital path at zero degrees. While in orbit, your frameshift drive is less affected by the planet's gravity well and so you can travel much faster to reach your surface destination. When you're ready to commit to a landing, set your throttle to zero and lower your attitude so that your destination is between 20 and 30 degrees. It is advisable to be at least 300 kilometers from the drop point as displayed on the PAS before beginning your descent to shed velocity as reaching the drop point too quickly will result in premature frameshift failure. When you reach the drop point, your ship will be traveling at 2,500 meters per second, and you will enter glide mode. Glide mode shuts down your frameshift drive, but keeps the field active long enough for you to reach the surface in a reasonable time frame. Like atmospheric gliding, the field will fail should you point your nose above the horizon at zero degrees or too low. For longer glides, keep your nose at 5 degrees and keep it at 30 for shorter ones. You will have some maneuverability during the glide, however please note that glide maneuvering is highly limited. Gliding will automatically terminate upon closing surface distance to 5000 meters or if you abort it manually by adjusting attitude to over 0 degrees. Upon exiting glide, your destination should be nearby if you have navigated correctly. If it isn't, consider flying away from the surface and activating your frameshift drive to have another go. When you have arrived, pay very special attention to local gravity and your EPR in order to avoid any unwanted interactions with the planetary surface. With these insights, you can better understand your vessel and what it is capable of. Congratulations, Commander, in completing advanced flight. Next time on the Elite Dangerous University, 
We'll be looking at Module 202, Know Your Ship. We'll be covering the smaller, multi-role starships that most of you will have already flown in, hopefully giving you new insight to your latest ride. Hope to see you there. The Elite Dangerous University has a syllabus of 18 classes split into four modules. Our bandwidth is limited, but we hope to be able to broadcast at least once per Terran week. The EDU receives no funding from any solar or interstellar governments or credit unions, and relies entirely on its patrons and alumni for its continued existence. The suggested tuition fee is five credits per month, payable to the university's sole faculty member. Financial links can be found below the viewing pane. We hope to be able to add more modules in the future to discuss recent revelations from the Pilots' Federation in their 4.0 charter, soon to be pressed into law after pilot projects in remote sectors. Thank you for watching. We share knowledge, and we hope you will too, by subscribing, activating the bell notification system, and sharing what you have learned with others. Fly safe, and we'll see you next time.